Hey folks, this is it. This is my top 10 of my top 100 games of all time. Uh, I am Maggie Bot. If you've not been following along previously, I have so far gotten through 92 other choices because I had forgotten two. Um, this is my top 10 and I don't know that this order would always be correct, but this is the most correct I could do without making myself crazy. Um, I have tried to record this video now three different times in three different moods and have been unsuccessful, so we are just going to post whatever happens. This is it. Uh, so let's begin. Uh, no, at number 10, we have Trajan. Uh, this is a Stefan Feld game from 2011. It is a two to four player game from Aminit Spieler. Um, this came to the States from Passport Game Studios and is my favorite felt at two players. Uh, uses a Mancala rondelle, and so players can choose whatever actions they like as long as they kind of set themselves up for it. You plan each turn in about three different turns worth of stuff at a time, and it has lots of open possibilities. It is the quintessential point salad from Feld where there's military or votes or shipping or construction or whatever. And you can make any of them work, but um, I, I quite love it. I love the planning. I love the Mancala, and there's just nothing quite like it. Uh, it was one of my very, very first pickups after I'd gotten my job at Card Kingdom, and it set me on a path to loving Feld. This was my first Feld, and um, more than anything else, I can suggest this as a first Feld because it does give a good idea of what he does well, and if you don't care for this game, you may not care for a lot of his games. At number nine, we have Power Grid. Uh, it's a 2004 game from Freedom and Frieza, uh, published by Rio Grande out here in the States. It's a two to six player game. It is one of the very few Euros that goes up to six pretty comfortably. And if you don't care for this game, that's okay. A lot of people have called it mathy or dry, but I think it's one of the most dynamic games because it's all about getting in, getting your resources, getting stuff powered, but not coming out too far ahead at the beginning because turn order really, really matters. So you have to base your actions off what other people are doing. You can't really jump out ahead at all and still do well. Resource management is really important. And this is one of the very few games where I would suggest as many expansions as you can stomach. Uh, each map is slightly different. Each one is better at different player counts. There's always an interesting twist. Power Grid is a living, breathing organism, and I love, love, love playing it. Um, can't recommend this enough. I would say the two player is less likely than the six, but um, I would play it at any player count, honestly. At number eight is Arkwright. This is a 2014 title from Stefan Risthaus, uh, published by Spielworks, and then later brought to the States by Capstone Games. Um, it plays two to four players, even though my favorite player count is four. And it has kind of three modes. It has kind of a beginner, middle, and a more advanced mode with uh, shipping and some other aspects added into it. Um, so the four-player full game is my, by far, hands down, my favorite, the reason it's not number eight on my list. If it didn't include that, if it was just the Spinning Jenny version, it would not be so high. Um, it's an interesting game no matter what, but without shipping and some other stuff, um, it just doesn't have as many options, it doesn't have as many paths to victory, and therefore would not be as interesting. Um, I'm very, very interested in what Stefan has in, up his sleeve next. Um, I know that his next game is coming out really soon, and I'm looking forward to playing it. Um, some other people have told me that this game doesn't appeal to them visually, but I found it to be really beautiful. I kind of like the monochromatic cover. I like the color choices and the art choices. It doesn't detract from the game, but still has a little bit of flavor all the way through it. Um, just one of my favorite games, obviously. At number seven, you have Kalos. Uh, Kalos is a 2005 game from William Atia, published by Istari. Um, it has been brought to the States and published many, many times over. You can also see the deluxe version Japanese cover here on the slide. Um, Kalos is one of the original quintessential worker placement games. It is also one of the more mean 
games in that genre, um, players work as a team to keep down the leader of whoever you think is winning the game at the time. And that seems really important to me. I really like that in a game where everyone has to kind of recognize who's jumped out in the lead, who the top runners are, and try and keep them back. Um, dealing with the provost in this game is one of my favorite mechanisms that you don't really see in any other games. William Atia has since only done the card game version of Kalos, and he did uh, Spirium. And I really hope he's got some other games up his sleeves, because I've so far loved every game he's done. <laughs> At number six, we have Nippon. Nippon was a 2015 title from What's Your Game. Uh, this was designed by Nuno and Paolo, and it is an action selection game. Uh, players have a choice of meeple on a turn. You choose a meeple, and wherever you take that meeple from is what action you're going to take. The number of colors of meeple will tell you how much income you get for the, the following round, and it's mostly an area majority game bulk of your points come from dominating different areas of Japan. Uh, the cover is absolutely beautiful. It doesn't really tell you what the inside of the game looks like. It's not the most beautiful game. But uh, that's kind of typical for What's Your Game. They don't do beautiful game boards. They do beautiful covers and really good games. Someday they will figure out how to make a, a board that's not hideous. <laughs> but Nippon is amazing, and it's also now available as an online play game, I think on Board Game Arena, and so it works really well as real-time. I didn't do very well as an asynchronous play, um, but I'm finding that to be more and more true of all online play games. I'm playing a Concordia game right now, and I'm just tanking it, so it might just be my own fault not being able to string together my strategy without taking copious notes. At number five, we have Luna in our final um, Feld of the, of the list. Luna is a 2010 Stefan Feld game. It is published by Hall Games, Puggish, Spiel, Z-Man, Tasty Minstrel, a bunch of other people. Now, this is one of those games that it came out to the States by Z-Man, got zero reception. Came out by Tasty Minstrel to the States, got zero reception. It is also really... Um, divisive between players of whether they love or hate this game. It is bar none a four-player game. It is not a two-player game, and it's another action selection game. Um, it's really weird. It has a little bit area majority, a lot of pre-planning, but it also has these big swooshy uh, build-up turns um, where you take like a tidal wave and you replace all your meeples for the next turn and a little bit of a planning aspect because you kind of know what's going to be good or bad in the following round and um, just really interesting decisions all around f for my tastes. I find Luna to be beautiful and wonderful, like kind of a table hog, but that's okay by me. At number four, we have Terra Mystica, and Terra Mystica is, if I didn't have a cribbage board, it's the game I would take to a desert island. Um, I could play this game ad nauseum and never be sick of it. It plays two to five players at all player counts. Uh, the base box has 14 races, of which I think 12 are playable, and uh, it's just sitting fun. Uh, the game makers um, are not well known to me, and they haven't done a lot of games, but they just came out of the gate with this game. Everyone has a slight asymmetric, uh, property to their race, and, um, you all want to kind of complete the same type of strategy, but you have to do it in your own way. So maybe you have benefits on the cult track, or you have benefits in this type of building, and so you have to carve out your own space on the board and complete that objective. However, this is where the, the kind of beauty of this game comes into play, is that you are incentivized heavily to build near other players to get power, to get discounts on trading houses, and that power manipulation in this game is by far hands down the most interesting aspect of the game, and the little powerball mechanism I would love to see taken from this game and put into another game in another interesting way, because those are like my 
favorite decisions of when to use power and how and how to eject it and when to use it on abilities and when to use it just on a little bit of extra gold and how few power to get in down into your bowls to make it most efficient. Um, just a fantastic game. The expansion in my mind is sort of necessary. It's one of the few expansions I'll say this about. Um, mostly because it influenced the way that you, uh, the passing order worked. In the base game, if you pass first, you are the first player. Now this benefited the player to your left more than anyone else because they could stay in a round longer and still be second player in the subsequent round. In the expansion, passing order became the new turn order. The new boards were fine, the new races were not my favorite, and the new goals were really fun. So take that as you will, I could probably play the base game forever and be just fine, but it is one of the few ex uh, expansions that I've played and really enjoy. At number three, uh, we have Magic the Gathering. Um, I actually got a little paranoid. I had done a previous take of this video and magic came up and I was really worried I had told people that this wouldn't be in my top 100 because I know magic is kind of another animal, right? Like you have a game like Terra Mystica, I can purchase it at a store, I can play it six times, I can go teach it to people. Magic doesn't really work that way. If you play magic, you play a type of magic. I happen to play Legacy and EDH more than anything else, a little bit of Popper, but I can, I can play almost any magic, but those are the ones I really enjoy. And someone who grinds standard matches or plays modern is a very different experience to my experience with Magic the Gathering. Playing EDH for me is a relaxing multi-hour multiplayer experience, whereas a lot of people see that as the antithesis of what they want from magic. They want tight, quick decisions in a like half hour to an hour match. I like legacy because it seems to be the deepest strategy in my mind um, of just the different choices you have on the power level of the cards are all little bananas. Similar to my love of innovation, if everything is broken, nothing is broken. And so legacy is all of the cards from Magic the Gathering since its inception in 93 with a very slight restricted list of things that are just bananas called the Power Nine and a couple other cards. So Magic has been in my life now only only six years or so, but it very quickly became one of my favorite strategy games. Um, you can see on the slide my tattoo on um, my left arm, and it's kind of like a little cheat sheet, and it has kind of an inside joke for being my personal mantra. Because if you have to repeat something, you might as well repeat something that's going to help you in a game. Um, you also see one of the other aspects of magic that I adore is that it has uh, provided the world with 20 years of art that wouldn't have existed otherwise. There have been artists uh, commissioned and employed by Magic the Gathering since 1993, and that means a lot to me because there's not a lot of other places where artists get paid real money to do real work. And uh, my favorite artist from all of Magic the Gathering is named Chippy, and he's kind of a recluse, uh, but he makes these otherworldly lovely arts, and he makes my favorite swamp, uh, so I put that up on the title as well. Um, I could do a whole uh, 20 minutes about Magic the Gathering, but I will continue on. Just know that, yes, the buy-in of Magic can be high, depending on what you'd like to do with it, but the payoff is bigger than you think it will be. So that's my take on all of magic. <laughs> uh, number two is Kanban Automotive Revolution. It's a 2014 title uh, from Vital Serda and published by Stronghold Games. Uh, Kanban will very soon have a deluxe version coming out. Um, this for one reason or another is just one of my favorite games. It's 
sort of worker placement, more action selection, which I guess is my preferred thing because I've had so many of them in my top 10. Um, players are racing to innovate and build cars and show off to their boss, Sandra, who, uh, Sandra is also, I believe, Vital's wife's name. Uh, she's going to walk department to department, checking out your work and punishing those who are not doing their fair share. And, uh, this game, if you're just looking at it for the first time and you're just kind of staring at the board, it's overwhelming. There's a lot of colors, there's a lot of pieces, there's a lot of things. But the simple elegance of moving one worker back and forth over the board until the end of the game is so interesting and fun to me. The timing aspect of trying to make sure you're getting to the right departments and how you're getting there and what pieces you can take and what you can do to get in other people's way is so interesting to me. Uh, this game is a lot of fun. It can be shorter than people, I think, assume. It's about 90 to 90 minutes to 120 minutes once you know it pretty well. And the teach, after a while, you can get down to about 20 minutes. Uh, so for a heavy game, it is on the more simple side. And it just proves to me over and over to be so genius that I, I quite love it. Um, it doesn't always have the best response from players that I teach it to, but those who love it, love it a whole darn lot. And last but not least, number one, <laughs> it's still Dominant Species. Uh, Dominant Species is a 2010 title from Chad Jensen and GMT Games. It plays on the box that says two to six players, but I really prefer it at six. I like the full complement of players. If I don't have six, four or five will do, but I would never play it below that. So what is it about Dominant Species that makes it my favorite game of all time? Well, in the best and worst way, it is uh, a good proof of concept for people I like playing games with. Um, it is asymmetric. Each player has slightly different player powers than everyone else, but everyone has the same goal, to dominate the most spaces by the end of the game. There are a lot of random elements, but they're presented in a very mitigated way. So at the end of each round, if you dominate spaces, you're going to earn cards. And that's very important because those cards are hugely swingy and very, very strong. So on a given turn, if you haven't really gone all out and you have ignored a very powerful card, you could get bit really hard. But as I mentioned, you have six players and only so many people are going to get cards around. So there's also kind of a diplomacy element that if someone goes after you pretty exclusively, they're not watching their back enough and someone else might come up and um, prey on them. So every player has to stay somewhat diplomatic and stay off the radar enough to gain strength and build species up and ultimately try to win. Uh, it's a very long game. Um, most games are around four to five hours. I've had them creep up into the six to seven hour range. Um, if you were playing to play as quickly as possible, you could play it in two to three. Uh, I'm, sh I'm sure I'm going to get comments that I play that in 90 minutes. But I've not found that to be true in my groups, and I've not tr found that to be true in my favorite games of it. Four, four to five hours seems to be the kind of sweet spot for six players. Um, there is some applications. There's a card game version, but so far I've yet to find a truly acceptable substitution for just getting a bunch of my friends together and playing it for a full afternoon. Um, this is the kind of game that you have to schedule beforehand and get people kind of bought in. But for me, I'd rather play one game of this than play four other lesser games. Uh, this was a game I picked up when it first came out thinking that it sounded sort of interesting and as I learned more games, because it was very early on, um, I would I would play other games and I would be comparing them to this experience I'd had of playing Dominant Species, and nothing else was really holding up to that uh, comparison. And eventually I just realized that maybe this was just my favorite game and I shouldn't hold everything up to such a high standard. Um, Chad Jensen has made other games. He was responsible for Combat Commander, and he did a game called Urban Sprawl. But so far, this is the only one of his games that has really hooked me. But it is 
by far my favorite game. Um, it is actually, if you can see, I don't know if you can see on here, but the color pattern of my tattoo is the original colors of the cubes in Dominant Species. Um, I do love it just that much. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't want to call out to everyone and play it with everyone, but I will play this with most of my friends. Um, give me a good Saturday or Sunday of Dominant Species and I'm probably a pretty happy girl. All right, I guess that's it. Thank you for watching my top 100 games of all time. Um, if you are a supporter or friend or you have followed me here or on Twitter or even supported me through Patreon, you are amazing and I love you. Um, it's because of those types of support that I'm able to continue doing content. And as far as I know, people want me to continue to do that. So that's great. Um, this has been quite a larger project than I thought and this last video was the hardest one of all oh my god because talking about your favorites and trying to make sure that they feel like they're in the right order is really important and it was really hard so I'm, I'm glad you guys followed me this far um, if you are subscribed thank you if you are not please consider subscribing now I will have more content in the future um, if not then cool that's all right too <laughs> <laughs> but um, cheers to you all. Thank you so much for everything you do and everything that you help me with. I love you all and I'll see you next time. Bye!